my friends, and welcome to your week ahead pick a card. It's been a minute since I've done one of these, so I'm very excited to see what we have in store for you over this next week. So if you're familiar with pick a cards, this is pile number one. This is two and this is three. You can go ahead and head down to the timestamps. Uh, if you would like to select a candle, just go ahead and wait with me here one moment. I'll go ahead and place the candles down now. All right, so pile number one, you have a purple candle. Pile number two, you have a white candle. And pile number three, you have a black candle. So I will give you some time in a moment to meditate on the cards. There's also a timestamp for it down below. But if you're unfamiliar with pick a cards, basically the thing that you want to know is that number one, you're never going to choose wrong. Even if multiple piles are calling out to you, some people listen to all three, some people listen to two, some people listen to one. It is all up to you and your intuition and what you feel called to. Uh, you might wanna choose based off of the candle colors. Maybe you just feel drawn to one specifically. Uh, it also, you could look at like the timestamps down below and see if your lucky number is listed. Uh, a lot of times people will choose based on that. You can also read the auric fields of the cards if that's something that you know how to do. Uh, you can also just randomly choose one. Just rest assured that you're never going to choose wrong. There's always going to be something in there for you, no matter which. And, um... Also, please keep in mind that these are generalized readings. So as there are thousands of you that view these pick a cards, I do my best to channel in as much information as possible, but sometimes it's going to be one card or five cards or just the candle blessing that week, you know, just keep that in mind that it is very generalized. So for some people, the entire thing just totally resonates, but it might just be a few things for you. So always take what resonates and leave the rest. And the last thing I want to say before I give you some time to meditate, on at the piles is that uh, you may find that you don't like something that I say, or, you know, maybe you just don't like that direction. Just know that you are always able to shift where your energy is going. I am just reading off of your current energy. So if something you want to change something, you absolutely have the power and the free will to do so. This does not like seal your fate. So just keep that in mind. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and be quiet and give you some time to meditate on the cards. All right, pile number one, welcome in. If you chose this pile, you chose the purple candle. And purple candles actually represent the divine feminine as well as your intuition and psychic gift. So you may find that you want to set intention to strengthen your psychic gift, maybe have your psychic gift be revealed to you. Uh, maybe you just want to get more in touch with the divine feminine within. Everybody has divine feminine and divine masculine energy. It doesn't matter how you choose to identify, everybody has those energies within them. So uh, you may want to set intention for those things. However, you can set intention for anything in the world that you want, person, place, thing, a feeling. All that I ask is that in this moment, you choose something and place your hands over your heart space because when you connect to your heart center, you actually are telling the universe that you are in full alignment to receive your manifestation because as humans, love is the highest vibrational frequency that we can attune ourselves to. So go ahead and place your hands over your heart center and we're just gonna take a deep breath in through the nose, out through the mouth. Focus Focusing on that intention. All right, I'm going to go ahead and light this for us. And 
The flame is definitely growing in size, but right off the bat it was very small, and I wouldn't say that this is like an above average flame. So many of you may want to dive a little bit more into your psychic gift or explore different kinds of psychic gifts to kind of see which you feel like you excel at the most. Now rest assured, everybody has intuitive psychic gifts. It is not made for just special people. It's not like only some people can do it. Everybody can tap into that. Uh, sometimes it just takes a little bit more uh, researching, looking into and centering yourself to get there. So uh, it might take a little bit more work, but that doesn't mean that it's not coming. So we're going to go ahead and put this candle up over here because sometimes the flame will interact with the reading. And so I like to keep my eye on it just in case. And let's go ahead and see what the cards have in store for you, pile number one. So uh, I'm using a really cool new deck today that I'm very excited to share with you. So we have the Eight of Swords. It's this deck. Actually, I have two cards from this deck. Uh, this is the Before Tarot. And um, I was actually discouraged from buying them when I like immediately picked them up at the store. And I ended up getting them anyway because I just read differently, I feel like, than the like... I don't want to say basic tarot reader, but like the average tarot reader, I read a little bit differently. So I'm, I'm glad that I actually followed my intuition and picked them up, but um, I'll explain a little more about that in a second. So then we also have the queen of swords. So with these two cards, um, the reason that they are called the before tarot is because it's kind of like imagery drawn up to symbolize what is coming before the original tableau images. So like what would have happened like just a few moments before the image that we typically see. And this isn't to tell you about your past. The reason that I'm using these right now is to kind of show the energy at the beginning of your week that you're going to be stepping into. So with the Eight of Swords, I feel like many of you are actually feeling very afraid of your intuitive gifts. Uh, this might be something that has been conditioned in from early on because there's this figure here pushing this woman towards all of these swords where she's bound up and blindfolded. And it's like, you feel like you're going in blind. Like you don't know what you're doing. You're not really sure what is going to come of this. And you're a little bit scared of it. And I say that because we also have this queen of swords, but let me look at this closer. Actually. Um, what's interesting is she's receiving her crown from an angel that's coming by. And it's like, I feel like your gifts are like, you have always had gift. Like it's not something that, and I think the reason we're also so focused on these gifts is you did choose the purple candle. And that really tells me a lot about psychic gift. So, um, I do feel like whatever gifts you have specifically been bestowed with they're coming from divinity. Like divinity is letting you know. Now, whatever that is for you, if that's God, the universe, your angels, your spirit guides, you know, magic, whatever it is that you believe in, um, whatever that divinity or that divine presence is for you, I feel like you are being told now, like, here's your crown, your badge of honor to wear this. Nobody, no human person is going to give validity to your gifts. That can only come from yourself or the divine. So don't question it so hard. Like, oh, did did I did I feel that? Did I see that? Did I hear that? I feel like when we start to question and pick apart the divine, that's really where we get lost. When it's like the follies of man, if that makes sense, or of the human in us, which we are all human. So don't beat yourself up about it either. And you know what's really interesting? I don't think you can see it from this angle, but this candle flame, it almost looks like it has like a petered out section that is separate. And I feel like this is really what might be going on with you right now. You're not fully in your body, in your present self. You haven't allowed yourself to fully experience how magnificent you are and how much power you actually have. But it's like the flame is like slowly pulling that part of the flame back towards itself. So like you are slowly integrating yourself, which is very beautiful. I love that for you, especially for this week. Um, I feel like some of you might actually have an experience. There might be like 
um, depending on what type of gift you've been really working with, you might have an experience that really solidifies that for you this week. Now, some of you, I also feel that if none of what I just said is resonating, remember these are general. So there is several messages that come through for some of you. I feel like you feel like you are, I'm getting this image of like walking the plank, like you are just being pushed to do something you really don't want to do, whether it's like be at a job you don't like, be in a relationship you're not happy with, go somewhere you don't want to go, do something you don't want to do, but you feel obligated to do it. This is the week where you need to really turn that around and stand up for yourself, even if it's really uncomfortable, because this is how you're going to reclaim your power, especially with the Queen of Swords coming out. The Queen of Swords is someone that that speaks their divine truth. And sometimes in like a negative light, the queen of swords can be seen as like the quote unquote bitch card, but I don't personally believe that. I think the queen, Hey, 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 Whoa, Whoa. Speaking of the divine feminine. I don't know if you heard that my one female cat, uh, just came into the living room, drama queen, hissing up a storm. Um, she's very dramatic. You can look at her wrong and she'll hiss at you. Um, Everybody calm down. Be nice to each other, children, please. My cats. I don't actually have kids, just cats. So apologies if you heard all of that ruckus. But as I was saying, this in a very negative light can be seen that way. But I don't harbor that belief about the Queen of Swords. I think she's someone that is honest with herself and honest with the people around her. And again, it doesn't matter how you identify. It doesn't have to be she, he, you know, it's they, them, however you see yourself. Um, now we also have the two of pentacles for you. So this is more towards the end of the week and the two of swords. So I feel like those of you that chose this pile, you are going to have to make a decision whether you want to or not. And that is to either go through with continuing to do this thing that whatever it is you don't like doing, um, I'm, I'm hearing for many of you, it might be a job that you don't like, or just interacting with someone that, you know, you really don't want to be friends with, but you keep doing it anyway, or interacting with a family member that really upsets you, even though like, cause you think you have to do it because family quote unquote, when really you don't, you have a choice. And this week that is really going to be shown to you that a, you have a choice and B you're going to have to make a choice about if you're going to continue to let this behavior happen or if you're going to change it or transmute it or move in a new direction, because twos always talk about options. They give us choices. And if you don't make a conscious decision, a lot of times the universe will make that choice for you. And it's not always the most favored choice. So just keep that in mind this week. Um, we also have for you, we have... Uh, let's do the Zodiac cards first. We have Libra, I balance, which is really interesting because we have this two of pentacles, which also talks a lot about balance. We have Mars force. I feel like many of you maybe have been feeling like you're being forced to do something. And then we have Saturn, the truth. Ooh. Okay. I'm going to really lay it on. I'll lay it down for you <clears throat> with this kind of situation, especially this eight of swords up here in this kind of situation. When I see a Mars force, this to me is an internal conflict. This to me really is about you not saying actually, no, I do have a choice. I do have a say. And even if whoever you're around tries to pretend that you don't, or gets angry at you for saying, no, actually I have a choice. I don't want to do this thing. Even if they get mad at you, that's not your problem. That is a hundred percent their problem where they've come from and it has nothing to actually do with you. So if there's somewhere you don't want to be, put your foot down this week. Let people hear you um, make, cause do you want to continue to live your life in this way? I can sense that many of you are very uncomfortable. Um, and those of you that when we were talking about psychic gift, don't force it. Don't force things to come out of the woodwork. Let things come naturally to you. The truth is going to come out anyways. And I feel like I'm also getting this like with Saturn truth, I feel like there's potential that whoever has been really upsetting you, I'm really sensing that it's a person whoever has been upsetting you, you're afraid to go against them because you're afraid that they're going to spread it. 
to the rest of your friends, the rest of your family, the rest of your coworkers. And I have to tell you something. The truth is always going to come out in the end. It might not be right away. It might not show up right away. And you might not be redeemed right away. But the truth will always come out. Other people will eventually see it. And I can say that even in my own life. That is absolutely true when dealing, especially with like negative family members, when you feel like you're the outlier that's going against that person, eventually the truth will come out and everybody will start to see how actually ugly that person's personality is and what kind of toxicity they're letting out. So you can go against the grain. It's safe for you to do that. And with Libra, I balance. This is about coming back once again to your own center, just how we saw it in the candle flame. This is about you recentering yourself and being the person that you want to be and making the decisions that are in alignment with you, not in, in alignment with other people. And I also have for you integrity and the king of earth. So with integrity, integrity... I mean, this is about you keeping your integrity, about you keeping keeping that for yourself. And with the King of Earth, this is very symbolic of the Tarot's King of Pentacles. So some of you also might be worried about finances. Um, and there might be a little bit of rebalancing that's going to have to happen because with the Two of Pentacles, this is like a good thing with money. This is like balancing out money. But when we see a King of Earth or a King of Pentacles, this is somebody that makes good financial decisions. This is someone that usually you have money because you're living in accordance with your truth. And so money will naturally be attracted to you. So those of you that are concerned about finances with this, uh, maybe you are afraid that somebody is going to cut you off financially and you need that support. I feel like Spirit wants you to know that you will be okay. Things will be okay. It's more important for you right now to keep your integrity about you. And I completely forgot, but I do want to roll the astro dice for you guys, or excuse me, for you all this week. Uh, please always correct me if you hear me say you guys. Uh, that's just something that I want everyone to feel very comfortable on my channel. So if you ever hear me say that, please don't hesitate to call me out. Um, I always would rather use words that are appropriate for everyone, but, um, you all, I do want to roll the astro dice for you this week. So let me just grab those real quick from my desk. All right. Let's see what the Astro Dice have for us. We'll roll them one at a time today. Uh, let's start with, let's start with the planet today. All right, so it looks like we have the North Node. We have the North Node. So this is about following your true North this week. The North Node is about following your destiny. Um, I would actually encourage all of you, if you're unfamiliar with the North and South Node, which from my last pick a card, many of you said that you were unfamiliar. I would love for you to go to the Divine Venus's channel or Astro Kit's channel or even Stargirl the Practical Witch's channel. These are three beautiful astrologers that... I feel like have some amazing information on the North and South nodes. I am a tropical astrologer, but I do not feel that that astrological predictions are my strong suit. Tarot is my strong suit. Uh, so at this point, I don't offer astrological predictions, but they definitely do. So I would encourage you to check out those channels, um, especially the Divine Venus. She put out one on uh, your dragon. And I thought that was, it's all about the North and South node, Rahu and Ketu. And, uh, it was just so information packed. So this is about following your true North. So if you are interested in that, like knowing in your astrological chart, where your North node is, how to find it, um, definitely check that out. Um, so that's this week is about following your true North. Now we also have, cancer. So some of you might actually be north or south nodes in cancer. I'm a south node in cancer myself personally. So my north node is in Capricorn and yours would be too. If you're a south node in cancer, they're always the opposite of each other. But with cancer, I feel like this is coming out. I feel like many of you are dealing with family stuff. If it's not just 
getting more into your intuition. Many of you are dealing with family stuff this week because cancer is to me the family sign. It's all about like hearth and home. Uh, so this to me is representational of family. Now, if you don't feel like you're necessarily close to family or that doesn't really resonate, know that your friends can be your family too. I always like to say that you have your biological family, which is the one that you're born into. And then you have your logical family, which is the one that you choose. These are your friendship groups. Uh, and sometimes family can also be your friends. So um, I am getting that for you this week. Now, we also have the 11th house. Okay, so the 11th house deals with... Um, the 11th house is ruled by Aquarius. So this is going to be... I always like to talk about Aquarius like it's the humanitarian, but I also feel like the 11th house, at least in terms of like moonology, which is where I do a lot of house work, um, the 11th house to me is the wishing house. And so I feel like whatever you set your intention on this week that you would like to kind of change, I'm really getting the sense that many of you want change in some dynamic as well. If there's something you want to change, put that intention out there. Either let it be known by the people around you or just have it on your heart, you know, and live like it already is. You know, if it is this really intrusive family member or friendship group or work style, live like it's already different as much as you can, because the more that you put yourself into the state of feeling like it's already happened, your brain doesn't know the difference between what you imagine and what is actually happening. And the more you do that, we do live in a universe where the law of attraction exists. And so what you put out there cognitively or in your, in your mind's eye, it will start to reflect back at you. So good luck this week. Uh, don't forget to keep your integrity about you. Keep your words strong and know that you're strong enough to handle this. I feel like you are going to come out on top as long as you are really strong in your truth and you keep your integrity about you. So good luck this week. I love you so much, pile number one, and uh, I will speak to you again soon. Please do not forget to follow me on Instagram and TikTok. If you like any of the decks that you see pictured today or the Astro Dice, I always link them down below so you can check those out. And uh, if you feel called to do so, I do have Cash App, Venmo, and PayPal. I do accept tips for my readings. It is not expected, but always appreciated. So that is there if you want to use it. And uh, when you stand up in your own authenticity, you empower everyone around you to do the same. I love you so much and I will speak to you again soon. Bye. Hello there, pile number two, and welcome in to your week ahead reading. So if you chose this pile, you chose the white candle and white candles actually stand in for all the colors. They are universal. They're also really good candles for connecting with your angels and your guides. I feel like presenting them with a white or gold candle is always really great. So you may want to set intention this week for your guides, your angels to be present or literally anything that you want. Uh, I always say with any of the candles that I light, you can always choose anything but this one for real real not for play play like this is the universal for anything so finances career relationships maybe you literally just want to receive a very specific gift uh you can set intention for that so the only thing that i ask with the intention candles is that you do put your right and left hand over your heart center because the heart chakra, the heart center really helps us to channel in that energy of love. And love is the highest vibrational frequency that we as humans can attune our energy to. So what you're saying to the universe when you do that is that you want whatever this thing is to come in, in the highest alignment with you. So let's go ahead and place our hands over our heart center. And we're going to take a deep breath in together, in through the nose, out through the mouth. All right, I'm going to go ahead and light this up for us. Ooh, this is a tiny flame. It's definitely getting bigger, but I feel like that one also, that's funny, pile number one did that too. The flame started like very small. It is getting increasingly bigger though. Like even now, I don't know how many of you actually listen to every single pile, but the flame on the purple candle from pile one is like huge right now, even though you can't see it. And this white candle's flame is huge. 
Um, it is dipping down a little bit right now, but to me that always says that your intention is like ready to come in and it will be coming in within the next little bit. Uh, I always like to see like a strong, steady, upward, relatively large flame. Now I feel like it's kind of gone back to average as I've been talking about it, but nope, she's reaching again. <laughs> All right, maybe we, maybe we have an inconsistent bunch of us here, meaning not in a negative way, but the energy just might be really mixed for this pile. Uh, so, um, I will roll the astro dice for you in a little bit. So we're just going to set that off to the side for right now, but let's go ahead and see pile number two, what the cards have for you. So I'm actually using a new deck today and I'm very excited. Just a couple of cards. Uh, we're using the before tarot and I feel like I need to mention it because it's a little bit different than traditional Rider Waite Smith. Uh, because it is actually the few moments before, and you'll see what I mean in just a moment. So we have the Knight of Swords for you. We have the King of Wands. And we'll start with these two, just kind of talking about them a little bit. So with the Knight of Swords and the King of Wands, I don't know how well you can see up in the camera, but... Basically, these images, the before tarot is like the moments before because the original tableaus, it's like the next few moments. So the imagery is like ever so slightly different. And with these cards, I really feel like at the beginning of your week, this is the energy that you're stepping into. So we have the Knight of Swords. This is like new ideas, going after things, um conversations, starting of conversations, having innovative ideas, chasing your dreams. And it's like, you're just getting started. You're, you're literally just amping up to go into this. And with the King of Wands here, um, with the King of Wands, I see that we have his staff here and normally that's in his hands. But I feel like with this card, the universe is actually giving that. The universe is passing the torch. So I feel like for some of you, you might even be getting a promotion this week. You're having a torch passed over to you. It's a gift that is coming. And it's through conversation. It's through maybe something that you've mentioned. Maybe you've told a boss or somebody in your business, whatever you're doing, that you want to go into another department. You want like a shift in career or... You've been working to quote unquote, prove yourself in some way. So I do feel like you are going to have a responsibility shifted towards you, but I think this is going to be a good thing because the King of Wands is somebody who is truly a visionary, a leader, someone that knows how to get things done. Um, I feel that this is, it's like, it's something that you've asked for because we have the hand of the universe being stretched out and saying, here you go. This is a gift from me. So I feel like whatever it is, it's going to be something very positive coming into your life. And it's from something that you've already let someone know. Now, this could also be a gift of other kinds as well. Um, it might be just a gift that you're receiving from someone. I feel like this week early on, you're going to be receiving something. And with the Knight of Swords, let me actually look at this one a little bit closer. Um, these are so new to me that I haven't studied all the imagery, all the imagery like super, super well. But with the Knight of Swords, this is also, if you can see in the imagery, uh, the knight on the horse is actually like commanding people behind him. Like it's time to go. We have to go. We have to do this thing now. And so I feel like you've maybe spoken up and you've kind of shown leadership quality and that's why you're being given this. So for many of you that are stepping into like new careers this week, this is the week that you're going to get word on it. Maybe you've already gone out for a promotion or a, maybe it's just a job. Like you have applied for work because you've been out of work and you show such great leadership quality that they want to put you in more of a leadership role. So I love that. Those of you that have been wanting to hear about work, I feel like this is the week that you're going to be receiving that. Like I said, it also could just literally be a gift that's coming. Now we also have the five of swords. So those of you that are being put into a position that is a promotion, um, Please remember that even though you have won, you have been given this thing, this gift, whatever it is, there are people that are still losing. Maybe you and a friend went out for the same position or the same job. Don't forget that that person is still losing and to remember to try to have compassion for them. 
Um, and to remember that, you know, they might have, they want to be happy for you, but they might be having a hard time. Don't take it personally if they don't want to sit and celebrate your victory with you. I mean, I would say sometimes that can be a mark of a not very good friend, but everybody is just doing the best that they can with what they have in the reality that they're experiencing and everybody's experience has been different. So I would say I would caution you to try to have compassion if you are able, because it seems like somebody is maybe going to get their feelings hurt over this. And then we also have the high priestess for you upright. So I love this card. This is all about, um, not only stepping into your intuition, but also stepping into your own feminine energy. This is also about learning new things, having new knowledge. Now, usually this is about like knowledge from the beyond, but um, this also could just be you learning new things in this position. I don't know why this reading is coming out so, so, so career focused, but maybe many of you that chose this pile, you were having some thoughts about career. Um, I also feel like this might be the week that towards the end of the week, you start to come out of a black and white way of thinking because we have this black and white uh, pillars being shown here in the high priestess. So these two cards are traditional Rider Waite Smith in case you're curious, but I feel like you're stepping out of a way of black and white thinking and you're actually allowing yourself to see other perspectives. So whatever this thing is that you're stepping into, it's going to be really good for the raising of your own consciousness. Many of you maybe have even just been working on that period. You've been working on just trying to raise your vibration and your consciousness. And I feel like this week you're going to make some kind of breakthrough on that. So up next, we do have some astrology cards for you. We have the 12th house of escape. We have a void of course moon missing and Yod destiny. Ooh, I just got the chills. Okay. I almost feel like I want to pull the book on this Yod card. I almost never pull the book when I read cards because I pretty well know most of my decks, but this Yod placement, I don't know that much about being an astrologer. It's just not a placement that I've done a lot of study on over the years. So we're going to pull the book really quick for you and see what is going on. I mean, I feel like I could guess because it says destiny. I could make an educated guess, but I would rather just give you the actual answer. And spirit is honestly pushing me to get the book. And I feel like whenever that happens, I always try my best to listen and not try to just phone it in because I would rather be, I would rather be very specific. So that's number 48. Let's take a look. I'll even show the book to you. So, uh, 48. Okay. Yod destiny. A person often meets his destiny on the road he took to avoid it. Ooh. Okay. The ancients believed that the Yod was an area of fate in the chart and not a particularly favorable one, also called the Eye of God or the Finger of God. The Yod is a peculiar astrological configuration in the chart. It is a triangle formed by two planets 60 degrees apart while while both are 150 degrees from a third planet. This creates a thin pie-shaped aspect. The Yod configuration is linked to the Hebrew alphabet Yod or Yud. In the 10th letter of Hebrew alphabet, which is the mystical implication signify the omnipresence of God and often denoting humility because the energy is locked in the triangular configuration, causing matters to be faded and often difficult, but not without their reward. Ooh, I got the chills again. Yod configura configuration is influential and implies that there is a disruptive force at work. In a sense, this astrological placement of planets is somewhat in exile from the other planet planetary energies because they are not harmonious with each other and therefore cause tension. This can bring about feelings of intense stress and restriction. There can also be a sense of being different, feeling alone and being out of step with the other with others at times. A yod in a natal chart can even indicate being the black sheep of the family. Wow, I did not know that. When the yod card presents itself in a reading, it means that the situation may be chaotic or may soon turn that way. It will be hard to see any clear path because of the chaos, but it will be important it will be important to weather through it all. There that is not always bad because it is the process of finding what works and what isn't functioning. And now will be the time to 
be scaling things down and weeding out what is unnecessary. Okay, so this is, okay. Key ideas, destiny, doing things on your own, standing strong and making a difference. Interesting. Okay, so I feel like with whatever this gift is that's coming in, honestly, because we have the 12th house of escape and the void of course moon missing here, I feel like this is going to be kind of shocking for you. Like you are going to receive this thing or be pushed into this thing and it's going to feel great at first because you're going to have all of this stuff open to you, right? All this new knowledge open to you. But I feel like it's almost like a too much too fast. And the thing is, you're going to make it through it will actually be good for you. And it's important for you to stay connected to what you're doing and not move into escapism and not move into like just kind of running away from this. Because even with the void of course moon missing, and well, the 12th house is escapism to me. It's the final house. The 12th house is the ending. So I feel like from this, you're going to be really shifting, excuse me, in a very large way. This is actually going to be like one of those like big moments in life where you're going to learn so much from this experience. And I feel like all these three cards coming out together seems kind of scary, especially this week. It might be kind of an intense week. Um, man, it started out so promising too. It was like, oh, you're going to get this new thing. It's gonna be so good. Try to have compassion for others, all this new stuff. I feel like it's going to be kind of difficult as you're getting the hang of it, but just remember to be present, practice grounding, practice really taking care of your energy body, because that is what is going to get you through it. That is what is going to make the biggest difference for you to be more present. And we also have the 10 of water. See, I knew it would get better. We have the 10 of water and the six of air. So with the, that's so funny. This card also talks about black and white thinking, the six of air. So I feel like this is also up leveling you in the sense that you're no longer going to be thinking in such a linear way. It's going to open you up to thinking and being more creative with the way that you handle difficult situations. It's almost like you're being up leveled in a way. And with the 10 of water, the Ten of Water is such a beautiful card in this deck. The Ten of Water talks about enjoying life's pleasures and just finding the joy in life in general and knowing that like basically the sparkle of the universe is on you right now. Um, it, it's truly such a great card. This this card recently came out in a reading that I did for myself and I was like, oh, this, it like made me cry. It was such a beautiful card, um, especially where it was in the reading I did. But um, some of you I'm also hearing that you might see sea turtles like sea turtles might be a really important symbol for you uh, maybe you have a tattoo of one or you actually have a pet turtle turtles are important to you um, but honestly this is about you really mastering your own energy because we have this woman she has like her magic going into the ground and also kind of like shifting it over here like she's kind of overlapping her hands and I feel like this is you really standing in your power and using your magic in the best in like in only the way that you could if that makes sense like nobody else is going to be able to fill this role the way that you are this week so I honestly think for you, pound number two, this is kind of a big shift. Whatever this thing is that's being given to you, it's it's transformative. And it's going to have to, it's almost like you are gaining like the next level in life. I don't even like, it's, it's not like, I mean, it could be like the end of a Saturn return. Many of you are ending your Saturn returns right now. If you have Saturn and Capricorn, it's almost over. Um, some of you, it might already like the peak of it might already be over. And this is like your graduation after the fact. So it's like you're graduating into the next phase. So it's a little bit difficult at the end. So you could move into the next, um, and with the six of air, this just really cautions and talks about, again, don't let yourself get trapped in black and white thinking. If somebody in your workplace or in your friend group or in your family group, or I'm really hearing it's a lot about people this week. Um, if there are people that are not being so great, try to see things from their perspective. Try to understand as best as you can that people like them, they're not born, they're made. And there probably is some experience that led them to be a certain way. And I'm telling you, compassion is going to be your saving grace this week. Compassion is where it's at. 
All right, so we are gonna go ahead and roll the Astro Dice for you. We're gonna start with the Planet Dice. We have Jupiter. Oh, I love Jupiter. Jupiter is, I mean, I'm Jupiter ruled <laughs> in tropical. I'm Jupiter ruled, so we love to see Jupiter. Daddy Jupiter is a, is a king and we love him. Um, Jupiter is the planet of expansion, abundance, um, and honestly, like things coming very easily and naturally. So I feel like this is like a natural progression for you this week. You again, should be expecting some kind of gift this week and you are expanding. Now we also are going, actually, let's roll the, this die first. This is the, oh, you got Gemini. Okay, so this is literally what I said. I was saying I think it's about people for you this week. People are really involved in whatever's going on. So Gemini to me does often speak on communities. This can be siblings or communities at work, communities in family. It's a group of people. So I feel like that's really what is the focal point for you this week. Um, it could also be your online communities if you're just home as well. And then we'll go ahead and roll the house die. You got one. So one is the first house. This is the house of self. So there is a focus on how you perceive yourself to be in a group of people. That's really probably the biggest theme of your week is how do you wanna carry yourself? How do you wanna present yourself? Who do you want to be is being highlighted. And I love that. So good luck this week, pile number two. You've got this. I promise only you can do things the way that you will do them this week. I'm already proud of you. So just keep going. And if you would like to, please do follow me on TikTok and Instagram. I'm at Chloe Taylor. If you see any decks here that you want to purchase for yourself or the Astro Dice, everything is linked down below for you. And if you feel called to, it is never an expectation, but always appreciated. I do have my Cash App, Venmo, and PayPal listed down below. Uh, if you would like to tip me, I'm always uh, open to accept them. But obviously, again, it is never an expectation. And please do not forget when you stand up in your own authenticity, you empower everyone around you to do the same. I love you so much. And I will talk to you again soon. Bye. Hi, friends, and welcome to your pick a card reading. If you chose this pile, you chose the black intention candle. And I would honestly say that black really does stand in for protection, canceling hexes or curses, and just honestly removing negative or toxic energy from your energetic field. So that's what I would personally use it for, but you can set any intention you would like to. The only thing that I ask is that you put your left and right hands over your heart because when when you attune your intentions to the heart center or heart chakra, you are actually aligning yourself for it to come in faster and in its highest vibrational alignment with you. The reason for that is because we as humans, uh, the highest vibrational alignment that we can attune our energy to is the vibration of love and unconditional love specifically. So when you do that, you're actually anchoring in this into your heart center, which is just beautiful anyways. And it really does speed up the process. So let's go ahead and put your left and right hand over your heart, set an intention for something you'd like to bring in. Now let's go ahead and take a deep breath in through the nose and out through the mouth. All right, and go ahead and light this for us. Pile number three. And, ooh, she did a little pop. <laughs> it was really, really dim at first. And then the second it hit the wax, it kind of popped up. So really beautiful. I would say that the flame is pretty average sized, which I feel like for a protection or a reversal candle is pretty normal. Um, unless you have like a lot of stank on you, sometimes it will like really blare flare up. Uh, but I feel like it's currently climbing a lot higher. So rest assured that whatever is blocking you or around you or on you or or anything you would like to be removed. The flame is actually, I think, bigger now currently than any of the flames that we've seen today. So it is definitely getting up there for us. Some of you really needed this removing candle. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this up here in the corner for us because I do like to keep my eye on it during the reading. Sometimes the candle flame will interact with the reading uh, and I will try my best to pay attention to that. So I will read Astro Dice for you in a little bit. We're just gonna go ahead and set those aside for right now and see what the cards have in store pile number three. So 
First and foremost, I am using a new deck today. Uh, and I'm very excited about it because the imagery is a little bit different than the traditional Rider Waite Smith. It's called the Before Tarot. This is not sponsored by them either. I've mentioned them a lot today, but um, I just thought it was a really cool deck and it reads differently than the Rider Waite Smith. So for your week, basically, this to me is the energy you'll be stepping into in the beginning of the week, the first two cards. So we have the Wheel of Fortune for you excuse me. And we also have the three of cups and oh, look at that three of cups. It's beautiful imagery. So I feel like this week with the wheel of fortune, we don't have like the, there's usually like a little uh, character here that's holding up the wheel on one side or moving with it. That's not present yet because this is the before tarot. So it's like moments before the original imagery. And with the Wheel of Fortune being like this, I feel like right now you are kind of in a state where the wheel can go either way this week. You can either set yourself in motion for a really beautiful, positive week, or it could definitely go in the reversal for you. And I say that because it's really important this week for you, pile number three, to set the intention that you want your week to be like. So literally on whatever day you're seeing this reading, ask yourself how you want the next week to be go to progress for you, set intention for exactly how you want it to go and ask for that. Ask the universe for that because you are able to manipulate that energy and to shift yourself into a reality that can bring that about for you. So I'm also seeing with the three of cups here earlier on in the week, uh, you might be getting together with some gal pals virtually or otherwise, um, or it doesn't have to be gal pals. There obviously are female figures being depicted here, but it could be any group of friends I'm really hearing. Um, maybe somebody in your friendship group is getting like virtually married or something or getting married this week. I feel like this person here is very symbolic of like a bride. Um, but I'm also seeing that there's this energy of I fill up your cup, you fill up mine. So you're going to be surrounded with beautiful energy of supportive people. So whoever you're going to be spending time with this week, I feel like you sh you can rest assured knowing that they have good intentions for you. Now, I will say this, there are some three of cup cards that are not well intentioned. I feel like this one really is uh, because she is filling up the other's cup. They look like they're having a really good time. They have uh, smiles on their faces. The seasons are depicted. This is like connections with people that want to support you for more than just a brief period in life. This is like the lifelong connection because we have spring being depicted. We have looks like autumn being depicted. Uh, we have like basically connections that are for the long term. So even if you're like meeting someone new this week, uh, the wheel of fortune can also talk about fate and faded things. So you might even be meeting somebody that's like a faded part of your reality, a faded friendship, a faded partner. Um, this could be a soulmate because I did get that like wedding energy, that bride energy. You could be meeting, uh, somebody that you are going to spend the rest of your life with this week. It's kind of seems like a big week pile number three. Um, but something, something to me that is very faded is going to be coming in this week. Now we also have the page of swords and the five of cups towards the end of the week. So I do feel like at the end of the week, you are going to be very in your head, potentially about this connection. And the reason that I say that is because the five of cups is really the card of you don't realize the good things in your life. You're only focused on the negative. And in every moment, I promise you, there really is something that you can pull out that is a positive thing or a good thing or a good experience that's coming out. And we do not believe in toxic positivity on this channel. We also do not believe in spiritual bypassing. You know, let yourself feel the emotions that you need to feel. Let yourself have that. But also remember that the sun will shine again. And more often than not, we are just in our head replaying scenarios that have either already happened or we think are going to happen when nothing has actually happened yet. Um, so recognize that there are people that want to support you. There are connections that want to support you. You just have to be open to letting them in. And the reason I also said that I feel like you're going to be really in your head is normally the page of swords is very much like somebody who can 
kind of be immature with the way that they speak. And this could be somebody speaking to you or you speaking to them. But I feel like this week, because we have such a beautiful faded connection at the beginning of the week, I feel like this is more about you being in your own head because sword cards represent the element of air and air often talks about our mental intellect. And we also have this guy or this figure rather standing on a hill in the clouds. And so it's like head very much in the clouds, maybe not really seeing extremely clearly. Um, so towards the end of the week, you know, take it easy on yourself. Be gentle with yourself during this time. Uh, the five of cups to me is the card that is just very heavily deep in loneliness and sadness. So know that that support system is still going to be there for you and don't beat yourself up so hard. You're worthy of making great connections. You are worthy of feeling loved, supported, seen, and heard. So we also have for you this week, pile number three, cancer, I feel, which I feel like that is very much, you're just going to be very in your feelings at the end of the week. We have sixth house routines. And then we also have solar eclipse revolution. Ooh. Okay. This is exciting. So what's, I wish I had said it. <laughs> I hate it when I do that. When I hear a message and I like second guess it in my own head and I don't say it out loud because I can't see how it connects yet. But in this wheel of fortune card, because the sun and the moon are present, you can't see the moon right now because it's under this card, but the sun and the moon are both present. And when you have those both present, we have that solar eclipse energy and we actually have a solar eclipse coming up. I want to say on December 14th and uh, it's, it's an intense energy. It is revolutionary energy. And so I feel like maybe from this week building into that solar eclipse, you're feeling the effects of it before it's even happening. And this happens to a lot of people, especially if you are highly sensitive or highly empathic or somebody that like really is attuned to the energy of the moon, especially with cancer. Some of you might actually be cancer placements. Um, you might be very attuned to that energy and you're going to be feeling it by the end of the week because it's happening the 14th, which is the start of the following week. So I feel like many of you are going to be feeling it by the end of the week. And that's really what's got you feeling a mess. Okay. It's, we have these really heavy transits that are going on. Eclipses are always kind of chaotic energy. I mean, back even in the olden days, they were like a big time where people always felt like this doom and gloom, fearful energy, right? They're kind of catastrophic and they make big changes happen over the course of like the next six months. So many of you might just be really in tune with how intense that energy is. So just be gentle on yourselves this coming weekend and really rely heavily this week on your routines because that is what is going to be your saving grace for these heavy emotions coming up. Now, I don't even want you to feel any type of way about these emotions because we as humans, I think... There's this weird thing in society that's like, hey, you got to be happy all the time. No, actually, you don't. We have emotions because we are meant to feel the, the whole spectrum of them, right? We're given all of these emotions because we are meant to feel all of them. So don't shy away from them either. Like they're there for a reason. If you are able to give yourself the space and the grace, let yourself have it. You know, have the meltdown. Cry on your kitchen floor like Trisha Paytas. It's fine. You know, do what you got to do. I spent the lunar eclipse bawling my eyeballs out and I just let myself have it because I was like, I don't really know why I'm crying. I feel like a mess. It was my lunar return in um, tropical astrology. It was my lunar return and I felt like a mess and I just let myself have it. I was like, you know, you want to cry about it, Chloe? Let's cry about it. Like, you know, it's okay. It's okay to feel that way and to honor yourself and let yourself release because that's all crying really is, is a release. So let yourself feel, but if you are wanting to kind of start to pick yourself up, if you're feeling really heavy, just know that your routines are going to help you the most. So fall back on those routines, on your self-care routines, on your, um, if there's something that you do for yourself daily, try your best to put some of those things back into practice gently, of course, and just be easy on yourself. It's the best thing you can do at the end of this week going into the next, next week. So the last two cards I have for you before we roll the Astro Dice, we have the Three of Five. Fire. 
And we have the uh, Four of Air. So the reason I'm laughing is because the Four of Air is another card that is all about routines. It literally talks about like having strategic routines and sticking to them. So I feel like after this week, that's really what you're going to be focused on is like kind of getting back up on your horse and moving in a way that is in alignment with you. You're going to be releasing some baggage at the end of the week. And I feel like before the week is out, um, or at least maybe even into the next, next week, uh, you'll be starting to work on more routines that are good for you. You're like purging the old and bringing the new in. And with the three of fire, you might even be starting some new routines. You might be inspired to come up with a morning routine or a nighttime routine that really honors who you are and really setting out to make that a part of your life. And it's going to be good for you because the three of fire is this, um, masculine figure. He's like carrying a little knapsack with him and just going off on an adventure. Right. <laughs> and so I feel like this is going to be a new chapter opening up for you after this, like after you do the releasing, the feeling, this is going to be a new chapter opening up to you. And so honestly, I think it's going to be a beautiful time. You're making new connections this week. Um, there might even be potentially, like I said to, I believe pile number two, actually, was it one or two? I don't remember which pile it was, but one of y'all was getting a gift this week. And I also feel like the wheel of fortune can talk about gifts as well. So Oh, man, I'm also hearing that some of you, if you are getting married this week, you might be dealing with like post wedding blues. Like this actually does happen to some people. <laughs> um, they like idealize their wedding for so long that after it happens, they have like post wedding blues because this big event is now over. So some of you might just be dealing with that. And now you're settling into what your new routine is going to be like with your partner or whatever that might be. So just a couple of extra messages that came through. Let's go ahead and take a look at the astro dice. We're going to start with the planetary dice and you got, I want to say this is Uranus. Um, so Uranus Uranus is definitely an upheaval. <laughs> it's, it's change. It's upheaval. It's, um, Uranus to me can be a little bit on the chaotic side of things. Um, so I do, but I mean, we already kind of know that with the eclipse, the solar eclipse revolution energy, I feel like you're already kind of dealing towards the end of the week with a little bit of chaotic energy. This is why I said your routines are going to be so important this week. So just know that that might be the thing that's being highlighted to you this week. Let's go ahead and look at the astro sign. We have the sign of Leo. So uh, maybe you are getting close to a Leo. Maybe you're marrying a Leo. Maybe you are the Leo. Um, but I feel like Leo's the one thing that Leo to me really not the one thing Leo brings a lot to the table. Let's be real. We all do. But something that Leo is very, very known for astrologically is they are the kings and queens and the the thems and the theys of the self-care in the zodiac taurus and leo those are the two signs that are going to show you how to care for yourself the best so i feel like if you're down on your self-care if you have some leo friends give them a call ask them about what's hot what's new what's a new little regimen they've got going on and how you know they might even just be good for a little pep talk leo is really good for that and then for the house die, we have the second house. How funny. The second house is ruled by Taurus. And then I just mentioned Taurus. Um, with the second house, this is also about personal finance. So keep an eye on your finances this week. You might be receiving financial reward with that wheel of fortune. Uh, I feel like often it can talk about a large sum of money coming in. Um, but pay attention to that. Two also is that duality aspect to some degree, but also just like two things coming together. So again, this could be that whole wedding thing that I mentioned or meeting this other person, but more than anything, the second house as it corresponds to Taurus is about personal finance. So pay attention to finances this week, maybe even come up with a budget and that could be part of your routine, especially those of you that have been stressing about money. Definitely take the time, excuse me, this week to really re-solidify what you want your finances to look like in the future. I want to say Uranus is actually moving through the sign of Taurus as well right now. Um, if I want to say that's correct, don't quote me on that. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> um, but just interesting because we have both of those being depicted here, but 
In any case, know that you are divinely loved, divinely protected. Claim your blessing. Please do not forget to follow me on Instagram and TikTok. I'm at Chloe Taylor. And uh, if you want any of the decks or astro dice, I link everything down below for you in the order that it appears. If you feel called to do so, I also link my Venmo, Cash App, and PayPal. I do accept tips for my readings. It is not an expectation, but always appreciated. And please do not forget, my loves, when you stand up in your own authenticity, you empower everyone around you to do the same. And I will speak to you all again real soon. Bye.